let's look at some examples where we use the notion of percent. Here is a uh, tipping problem. Suppose we're told that a 15% tip amounts to $8.25, and we want to know what the original amount was. We're going to analyze that problem in the following way. We're going to look at three different amounts. And this is the way we're going to analyze all these problems, or let's say a lot of these problems. We're going to always think of them in terms of an original amount, a change, and a total. And before we plug in the actual numbers of the problem, we're going to focus on the percentage amounts. So the change here is 15%, which we're going to express as uh, a decimal number. That's 0.15. The original amount here, in proportional terms, is 1. One dollar results in a tip of 15 cents. And the total then, in terms of our proportions, is $1.15. Now, in this case, we're told that the tip is not $0.15. Cents, it's $8.25. So we put that in the change category. That's not the original or the total. So that goes in the change category. And we're looking for uh, what we should put into this slot here. So we could give it a name, x. And then think of this as a proportion. x is to 1 as 8.25 is to 0.15. In other words, we set up this equation. x is to 1. So we really don't have to put the 1 there. That's, uh, you know, we could eliminate the 1 and mean the same thing. And then we do 8.25 is to 0.15. So in other words, we're, we look at 8.25 divided by 0.15. And that's our answer. And uh, in the future, we won't even set up this equation. We'll just say, you know, what did I do to 0.15 to turn it into 1. And that is, I divided it by 0.15. So what do I have to do to point or to 8.25 to turn it into x? I divide it by 0.15. So you do the same thing to this that you did to this in order to get uh, the 0.15 back to 1. So the answer in this case is going to be It's going to be 8.25 divided by 0.15, or $55. So the original bill was $55. Now what about the total? Well, we go look at our proportions again. And we say, how is the total, which is over here, how is this total related to 1? Well, it's 1.15 times 1. So the total should be uh, whatever x is. And we saw that x is, you know, we could write it as 55. Well, let's, let's keep using the formula. x is 8.25 divided by 0.15. And then we have to multiply that by 115 to maintain all our proportions uh, to get from 1 over to here, we have to multiply by 1.15. So we have to do the same thing to this here. So in terms of our uh, numbers then, we can, we can either do this as 55 times 1.15, or let me use the formula all the way. So times 1.15. So the total is $63.25. And the tip, of course, uh, that's not something that you calculate. That was the given. That's 8.25. So uh, given one of these things and our ratios up here, 
we can calculate all the other things. So let's look at another example. Uh, let me clear the board here a bit. We don't need this or this or any of these. And uh, we'll keep our, uh, well, actually, I guess we should we kind of mess that up. We'll get rid of this, this, and this. Okay, and um, you know, what was this thing over here? This was our original. So we're always going to use those categories in all our problems. But let's look at another problem now. Here's problem number two. So a bank is paying 1.25% on a one-year CD. And the question is, how much would you have to invest to end up with $400 at the end of the year? Well, as before, we're going to first focus on our percents or fractions or ratios. And the point or the 1.25 percent is the change. So as a fraction, that's going to be or as a decimal, that's going to be 0, 1, 2, 5. And remember how we got that. We, When we're dealing with a percent, a percent means division by 100. So if we throw away the percent, we have to compensate by actually dividing by 100. And that means moving the decimal point uh, to the left two places. All right, so uh, and here again, our original is 1. And our total is going to be 1.0125. All right, now we look back at our problem and say, uh, or look at the 400. Where does that go? Well, that's what you end up with. So that's going to be here at the end. That's the total, 400. And we want to know what the original amount is. How much would you have to invest is the original amount to end up with 400. Well, you look at your proportions and you say, how do I get from this one back to that one? Well, you divide this one, the 1.0125, by 1.0125. So the original then back here would be using those same proportions. This would be 400 divided by 1.0125. And as a number, that's going to be 400 divided by 1.0125. Uh, so you would have to invest $395.06 in order to end up with the $400. And what's the interest that you earn on that? Well, again, you look here and you say, this is the interest on $1. So the interest on this amount here is going to be 400 divided by 1.0125 times 0 or you know, 0.0125. So as a number then, and it's no longer the tip, it's the interest. So let's change that heading. The interest is 400. And again, we could use the 395. Let's do it that way this time. It's a 395.06. That's the original amount times 0 0.0125. So the interest is $4.94. All right, let's look at another one. Let me see if I can delete just what I want to this time. All 
Okay, our third problem is a discount problem. So we're told that a certain item is discounted 25% and the sale price is $85. What's the original price? So first we focus on the percents. So our change in this case is 0.25 we're told that, uh, okay, with, uh, again, we don't focus on the 85 yet. We focus on our percent. So our original amount would be 1, and generally it is 1. Uh, our total, or final in this case, that'd probably be a better word for it, the final is 0.75. So if the original item costs $1 and we had a 25% discount, the sale price would be 75 cents. In our case, though, the sale price is given as $85. And we want to know what the original price is. So you look at your percentage and you say, how do I get from the 0.75 back to the 1? Well, I divide by 0.75. So the original back here is 85 divided by 0.75 and the change then would be that number whatever it works out to be and we'll just keep it in formula form 0.75 times 0.25 so let's see what they are as numbers so the original cost of this thing is 85 divided by 0 0.75 and the uh, this in this case it would be called the discount is equal to and let's use the formulas divided by 0 0.75 times 0 0.25 the discount is twenty eight dollars and thirty three cents and the in this case would be called the sale price is equal to $85, which we don't calculate. That's a given. OK, so again, we always set up our fractions or percentages, and we treat them as ratios. Uh, and then we plug in our actual numbers and uh, compute whatever we want to. All right, let's look at a final example. First of all, let me clear the board here. Okay, here's our final example, and it's sort of like our interest example, except uh, in the world of finance, a treasury bill is, uh, the interest rate on a treasury bill is expressed as a discount rate. So you just have to kind of know what they mean by that. So if someone says to you that the discount rate on a one-year treasury bill is one 0.25% what they're saying is this well let's put that in our change that's going to be 0 1 2 5 they're saying that or the, the way they want you to think is the total in other words what you're going to have after one year is one dollar and what you have to invest to get that one dollar is one minus point zero one two five so that would be point nine eight seven five so uh, if the sum of nine eight seven five and point oh one two five is one so it's going sort of the opposite of a a simple interest rate problem. If it were a simple interest rate problem, you'd put the one on this side over here in the original slot, and on this side you would have you would add the zero, uh, the point zero one two five to it to get one point zero two five up here. But in the special case where you're dealing with a uh, discounted 
note it's sometimes called uh, you go the opposite way you put the one here and you subtract to get the original investment all right so now our problem is how much would you earn if you invested three hundred dollars so the three hundred is going to go here and they're asking how much you would earn so that's going to go in this slot here so how do we get from here the original to here well you might think let's just multiply it by zero or point zero one two five but that's not going to do the trick uh, that's not going to give you point zero one two five you first have to divide this by point nine eight seven five and then the uh, multiply by point zero one two five so the answer is actually going to be three hundred divided by point nine eight seven five times point zero one two five and what's your total going to be? Well, you got to go back and look at your percentage and say, how do I get from the original to the total? And the total in this case is 1. So to get from this one back here, I have to divide by 0.9875. So the total here is going to be the 300 divided by 0.9875. Seven, five. So remember that to to get to here, you you have to do more than just multiply by 0 0.0125. First, you have to turn this into one, and then multiply by 0 0.0125. Uh, so you, that's why we have the 300 divided by 0 0.9875. So in this case, then the uh, original amount was a given so let's put that in as 300 that's the investment the actual earnings on this are going to be 300 divided by 0 0.9875 times 0 0.0125 so you earn three dollars and 83 cents on your investment and the actual uh, payout or you know final amount is going to be 300 divided by 0.9875 so uh, at the end of the day or one year down the road someone's going to hand you three hundred and three dollars and eighty cents now just interestingly enough what is this as a simple interest what would you say the simple interest on this uh, treasury bill would be well the simple interest is always your earnings divided by your original amount so let's just see what that is just out of curiosity so the simple interest rate we'll call it simple interest rate is equal to uh, what you earned which is 3.83 divided by what you invested and let's, uh, ex well, let's, yeah, that'll be a fraction that we can think of it as a percent. So, so the actual earnings amount, and let's give ourselves some more decimals there. As a percent, this thing here is equal to what? We have to move our decimal point in this direction so it's going to be 1.27666 and so on as a percent then as a simple interest rate it's actually greater than the discount rate so that means that you know if you're given a choice between a uh, point a 1.25% discount rate or a 1.25% interest rate on some investment, you should use the discount rate because, as uh, you know, 
it really amounts to a, a simple interest rate greater than 1.25 percent. It amounts to this as a simple interest rate. So that's enough for uh, these types of problems. So always remember, think in terms of three categories and proportions.